Hello! So, I thought I'd do a video to kind of explain a little bit of what uh, Bayless Ascaris is and why raccoons are not as cuddly and as friendly in many ways as they look. So, raccoons, don't keep them as pets. Don't try to feed them and pet them. D don't. Just don't. Don't do that. So I'm going to talk about a parasite that raccoons carry. It's estimated that 70 to 100% of raccoons carry this parasite. And if you can't count, that's a lot. Alright. Uh, this parasite, Bayless ascaris, is most commonly seen in the fall. And it's common where raccoons live because... Approximately estimated that 70 to 100% of raccoons carry it. This little guy is dangerous. Bayless Asterisk. It is dangerous. It is a type of nematode or roundworm. Um, so they're worms, so to speak. And it usually lives in the intestines of the raccoon. Um, and it is shed in the feces. The eggs are shed in the feces. And although the raccoon isn't affected in the way that we are by this parasite, um, you still don't want, you know, raccoons having this parasite or any other animal for that matter. So this is a zoonotic parasite, which means we can get it. Um, we get it by somehow indirectly. I don't think we would directly eat poop, but indirectly getting it from the poop of a raccoon because the eggs and the feces, the ova. And what is so bad about this um, is that, you know, as well as in other animals, in us and other animals, it causes neural larval migrants, which means the larvae migrate persistently through the brain and the spinal cord. And at that point in time, when the parasite has gotten that far into the body, um, the common treatment for humans, which is thiabendazole, it it's almost ineffective because there's certain blocks on medications to where, you know, they won't directly affect our, our brain, like go into that system. So once the larvae have entered that system, it's the medicine's not designed to treat that part of our body, you know. So it's, it's pretty bad. It's not a good day for anybody <laughs> whenever uh, neural larval migraines are a thing. Um, can be very deadly and it's just it's bad um, dogs can get this you know so if you have raccoons near your house oftentimes they will uh, poop in one little area you know like a ravine little area they'll make them a little area and if you know they are in that area using the bathroom that's not good um, this is a big concern for you as well as your animals um, and the thing about, this is my favorite part, the thing about, you know, the eggs in the environment, it takes a while for them to become infective. But once they do become infective, these eggs stay in the environment for a really long time, months to even years. And some of the only things that actually treat these eggs, get rid of these eggs, kill these eggs. Let's see, I can actually directly read from the CDC site, which says that treat decks patios, and other surfaces with boiling water or a propane flame gun. These things are not killed easily. Boiling water or fire. Or even just paving over. I mean, those are some things that kill these eggs, these parasites. This is, they're so durable, you know. Um... So also reading directly from the CDC website, eggs passed in raccoon feces are not immediately infectious. In the environment, eggs take two to four weeks to become infectious. So I mean, if raccoons have set up a den or a latrine in your yard, raccoon feces and material cam contaminated ra with raccoon feces should be removed carefully and burned, buried, or sent to a landfill. Care should be taken to avoid contaminating hands and clothes. Prompt removal and destruction 
of raccoon feces before the eggs become infectious will reduce the risk for exposure and possible infection. Do not keep, feed, or adopt wild animals, including raccoons, as pets. Washing your hands after working or playing outdoors is always a good practice for preventing a number of diseases. So yeah, that's uh, Bayless Askers for you. Um, oftentimes, you know, like in animals, it is diagnosed by a fecal flotation uh, or known contamination with raccoons, you know, uh, contact with raccoons. Um, and oftentimes for like, a, say a dog, uh, the common medication that they're going to use to help um, is going to be something like pyrantil, uh, which is a, a common dewormer. Um, once again, if it gets too bad, you know, that's not really, you don't want that. So, uh, prevention is really one of the best methods to like, you know, keeping you and your animals and everybody else protected. But sometimes, you know, uh, it's not your own animal's poop you have to worry about more, but every other animal around you. And you know, it's always best to clean up after your own animal. I know, nasty, gross, inconvenience, what? But you should clean up after your own animal at least once a week to prevent, you know, infections, you know, because feces, a lot of parasites are transmitted in feces and other animals get it and we can get it. And so it's always a good idea to clean up, you know, your animal's environment or to make sure you know, even if it's not your own animal species, that you clean up after another animal um, for that very reason. So that is Bayless Ascaris. It is a internal parasite of raccoons, and that's why raccoons are not as fluffy and cute and friendly, and they should never be made out to be as such. <laughs> because, yeah, deadly parasites. Woohoo!